name is Jessica Hauser. I'm the executive director of Downtown Boxing Gym Youth Program. Um, and don't let our name fool you. We are really an after-school academic program in on the east side of Detroit. Um, boxing is just the hook to get kids in the door, but really focusing on uh, mentoring, health and well-being, and the academic piece is um, the heartbeat of what we do. Our kids are 8 to 18. The program is free. We currently have 150 kids in our program and over 1,300 on a waiting list. The conversation about energy efficiency and in particular solar came up um, in large part having to do with how do we reduce our overhead so that we can get more kids in our program. And since our program was founded in 2007, every single one of our students have graduated from high school, over 300 kids, and 90% of our graduates have gone on to college. in a couple of ways. One is that we have this saying that we tell each other all the time is, you know, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we want the best for our kids? Why wouldn't we want the, you know, healthiest space, the safest space, the most beautiful space? How can kids strive to for the greatest and the best version of themselves if they don't even know what's possible. Part of our current solar project included includes an edu education component for our kids and families um, and staff, right? Because, I mean, we've learned a ton along the way about how do you really make solar impactful, right? Like if our walls are still Swiss cheese and letting all the energy out, having a million solar panels isn't gonna do a ton. So like, how do we shore up our building to make sure that there's an impact from, um, from the solar piece? The process for the solar system and really the whole energy project we're doing has been a five year journey. We moved, so our program moved from a 4,000 square foot space to a 27,000 square foot building about wow. six years ago. As part of that, you know, that launched conversations about, all right, how are we going to afford this space? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, the building we moved into was a former, um, printing shop. So, you know, there was not an efficient space. We began the exploration about what could this look like. Um, and it took a really long time to figure out the financial piece. It, we ended up landing on finding just some incredible individuals that believed in what we were, you know, our belief system and how we wanted to approach the construction project and got behind it. Um, because what we are finding, and hopefully it's different now, there was not, there weren't federal, you know, state or federal dollars or grants that would have covered all of what we needed to do. And as a growing nonprofit, especially, but as a growing business of any kind, to put ourselves, you know, in debt in the kind of way that we would have had to just didn't, would have been irresponsible. So over the last four years, you know, we just broke it out into phases to make it financially realistic and, you know, something that we could take on while still running our youth program. I don't want people to think it takes that long. You know, the solar piece was very quick once yeah. we got to that part. Having individuals who got it played a huge role in getting everyone else on board externally. It's night and day different. One of my most favorite people in the world said, you know, it's like having the sun, the sun is our donor every single day, right? As far as, you know, impacting our work, I think it just goes back to what I was saying before, it's just this mentality of, how, you know, how can we do this in the most sustainable manner? You know, mm -hmm. as a nonprofit, sustainability is a really tricky conversation um, because we don't have a, at the moment, we don't have an earned revenue 
yeah. stream, right? And so anything that we can do to help create a, you know, some sustainability is amazing. So for us, the energy bill, our energy bill in this, we're now in a 27,000 square foot building is, you know, would be massive and could be a huge barrier to us continuing to run our program and definitely a barrier to bringing more students into our space. And so to know um, that we are eliminating, you know, or significantly reducing that barrier mm -hmm. is has been a game changer for us. Everybody that we have conversations with that come into our space and see what we're doing, it really gives them confidence to continue to invest in our work because we are managing their money in the most responsible way we know how. Us all becoming mindful and taking care of our beautiful city. We talked about how much we love Detroit and it's like, put your money where your mouth is, right? It's just like, we need to stop tearing down our city, our planet. We need to do things that can lift us up. Um, additionally, with money and resources being so tight for everyone, like, yes, there's an upfront cost, but there's so many solutions. There's just so many options now, different ways that you can acquire solar without coming out of pocket in the same way that you know, everyone had to some years ago. I mean, even three to five years ago, there was a diff you know, it was very different. So I think it's definitely possible. It's definitely a great option. Um, and it just feels like a big statement of, you know, we're taking care of each other. We're taking care of our city. We're really making a statement about, you know, that we you know, are doubling down that we all want to be around for the long haul and have our city be as beautiful and, you know, taken care of as possible. Yeah, I mean, I would say the two top two things that come to mind is to really have an understanding of the space that you're looking to put solar on, understanding that and being honest with yourself about, you know, how much impact, you know, or how little impact and, and making decisions from there. And one of the greatest lessons that we learned through this process is it's okay to slow, you know, to slow things down. It's okay to, you know, really dig into the details. And that has turned out to, you know, have saved us time in the long run and saved us money in the long run. Giving yourself permission to go slow to go fast, I say would be, has been a huge lesson learned for us. I just think we need to continue to normalize it and have it be part of, you know, part of every project or, or something that we're all doing as a community. The more we do that, I think the better off we'll be.